Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everybody. I am so excited for this episode of the show about the show. This is a unique episode. It is an episode unlike any that I have ever done before. It is episode 19 of the show about the show. Up until this point, I've always had former players or coaches or minor leaguers, prospects on, all that kind of thing. But one thing that I know myself and a lot of other people are passionate about is collecting baseball cards we or memorabilia or whatever the case may be. It's it's a it's a way to meet lifelong friends and we call it the hobby. So it's a very, very, very cool thing. Some people have been doing it for two years, some people have been doing it for fifteen to twenty years. So today I am so happy and pleased and honored to have somebody from Tops as my guest. I have Susan LeJudy, who is the marketing communication manager for Tops. She is going to talk about the Tops products that have come out so far, which is series for baseball, which is series one, as well as Heritage, which just came out last week. What it's like to talk to, what it's like to work for the number one card retailer in the world, if she herself is a collector, and I'm going to ask her what it was like to be on her very own card last year. So, ladies and gentlemen, Susan LaJudy, how you doing, Susan? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. So, I guess the first question I I really have for you is, how did you get into the, how did you get into working for Tops? Um. You know, it's a lot of traditional, a lot of traditional people. When uh, you know, kind of sort of job opening there, and uh, sent in my resume and uh, info. But you know, I kind of had a pretty good background coming into it. It wasn't just, um, you know, I was a, a first of a card collector. However, I also had my own card blog for a very long time. It still exists. It doesn't get updated as often as it used to. But this is during like the heyday of when like card blogs were very super popular. It was called a cardboard problem, and I also did freelance work for Beckett, and then I was working for Beckett for quite some time, and then when I saw a job opening at Tops, I saw this is a great opportunity because, one, I love cards, and two, it was also um, in New York where I, I currently live, so I sent in my info, got an interview, probably literally got an interview at the end of the week. A week later, I got the job offer. So it was, it was pretty quick. It was a pretty quick turnaround. They were looking for somebody. The job was for a sports editor. And as a sports editor, what you do is there's a lot of duties to it, but the main one is picking the card images that go on the card. So it was, that was really a lot of fun to do. But now I'm a, the marketing communications manager at Tops. So but before coming to Tops, you worked for Beckett. What was that like? Um, it was um, it was interesting. I mean, it was right in my wheelhouse of what I did. What I did, I spent 15 years as a sports writer, so I was the basketball, football, and hockey editor at Beckett. I worked from home. For me, it was a remote position, so I didn't really work in the office a lot. But I made a lot of really great friends at Beckett because uh, there was some really great people that worked there, and even now, I still keep in touch with a lot of them. Yeah, and they actually just within the last. I think 18 months to two years have just started doing authentication. I know Steve Grad came over from uh, PSA, and he's he's starting their he started their uh, authentication business. So that's that's really really good for them. It helps give more legitimacy to a market that can be at times full of fakes. So always good to uh, always good to have more people in the business. Let me ask you this: when you when you were growing up, you obviously said, you know, you were a card collector. Did you did you find – were you the only girl that you knew that was a card collector? Because it seems like a, in the hobby, a, it's primarily a guy's hobby. Have you – have you did you run into any backlash, you know, as a kid or, you know, when you worked at Beckett or any of the companies that you've worked for kind of being a woman in a male-oriented industry? No, um, as a kid, you know, I collected cards 
with friends and family, so nobody ever kind of, like, judged me in that sense. And the blog, a cardboard problem, was actually me and my best friend writing the blog, who happens to be a woman. Um, I know a lot of women who collect cards. You know, we a lot of us hang out at the National. I went to dinner one night with, there was four of us who went to dinner. It, you know, while, yes, there's more men who collect cards, I think there's plenty of, also plenty of women out there who collect a lot of cards as well. So I've never faced any sort of, you know, discrimination or judgment or anything along those lines. Do, uh, do guys, uh, you know, obviously, you know, you, you have a very extensive history, both right, both as a sports writer, working for Beckett, working for tops. Do you, do you ever surprise people? mainly like do you ever surprise men with how much you know like your dealers at shows like oh man this lady knows what she's talking about um i think that happens from time to time i sometimes i just don't think there's some dealers who pay enough attention so to speak so i've seen it happen with men and women um you know and then sometimes i'll go to a table and they're describing things to me i mean i think sometimes it's just part of the sell as well i like maybe personally i might take it a little like oh you know like oh he doesn't know he doesn't realize you know i work for us but he doesn't why would they know that you know that's the other part of it like why would they know that here's just some random person coming looking at you know the cars on their table so I think sure. in my mind, you know, I just sit there and I listen to them. I'm like, oh, okay, cool, great, right, thanks. And then I just ask, you know, for the most part, I usually just will ask them for what I'm looking for because I have a pretty um, pretty big focus on what I collect. So the fact that, like, I'm not going to go and just, like, look randomly at cards. I kind of say, hey, I'm a big Derek Jeter collector. Hey, do you have any Derek Jeter cards? No? Cool. I'll move on. Oh, you do? You have a huge stack right here? Wonderful. Let me check them out. And for the most part, like, the shows I go to, I'm a pr- I'm pretty much a regular at this point, so the dealers know who I am, like, essentially what I'm looking for. So when I stop by, they're like, hey, check it out. We have a, you know, stack of GD cards here for you. So you mentioned that you do collect and you have a wide range. Baseball-wise, what do you collect? Obviously, you mentioned Derek Jeter, but what else do you collect baseball-wise? I mean, he's really just the main focus of my collection, um, I have over, at this point, probably 3,000 different Derek Jeter cards. He's been really the focus of it. You know, some players will come along. That I'm more of a player collector than anything else. Like, I'm not a big set collector. Um, I will – I'm a Yankees fan, so I will hang on to any Yankees fans, Yankees cards I do get. But generally, like, I'll collect the cards of my favorite players, which, you know – I grew up in the 90s and early 2000s, so I'm collecting, <laughs> you know, Derek Jeter and yeah. Andy Pettit and Mariano and Passat, you know, the core four. And now, you know, of course, like Gary Sanchez and Aaron Judge, like if I get those cards in packs, you know, I'm going to squirrel them away. Sure. What, has it always been the Yankees for you? Have you always been a Yankee fan or was it, or did it kind of happen more when you moved to um, working for Tops and lived in New York? No, I'm from New York. I grew up 15 minutes from Yankee Stadium. I am a lifelong Yankee fan. Okay. Okay. So, you know, obviously you work for Tops, and you mentioned earlier that one of the things that you started doing was picking images for the cards. Can you kind of talk about that process? Because I always think that's a really, really interesting process, especially given that certain players have base cards, short prints, and super short prints. Can you kind of talk about the process that goes into um, not only deciding what players get short prints and super short prints, but also what photos are used? Yeah, so it starts with, um, like, the, the associate brand manager on a product. The associate brand manager is the one who's creating, essentially creating the checklist. So he will, you know, put the checklist down. Here's who we're going to be in the set, you know, and it's, it's you know, the top players from certain these teams, you know, we're going to put in the set. So then it goes to the sports editor, and the sports editor is then in charge of, you know, acquiring the back and the back content information, like the stats and the, the um, you know, any text that needs to be on the back. And then they're also the ones picking the images. So they'll go through. And in my case, you know, let's just say I had to pick a car. I had to make a card of Mike Trout. So I will go. We use Getty Images. I'll go into Getty Images and start searching for cards and through images of cards and say, this is cool. 
and I'll like kind of put it up in a new tab. Like, oh, this is a cool image. Go through, go through. Oh, here's a cool image, new tab. Here's a cool image. So I'll get like, four or five different images, and then I'll go through those images. And of those like four or five, I would pick the one I like best essentially, which also and also what one also works with the design of the card because sometimes you can pick an image that's really cool, but then you put it into like the frame for the card and it doesn't always work. So you kind of have to have maybe an option, you know, an option B just in case something like that happens. So is the option B, is that the short prints and the super short prints? No, an option B would just be like if the first image did not work. So then when it comes to short prints, Generally, what, um, you know, for the most part, what people have tried to do as an editor, as a sports editor, you would say, okay, there's 10 or 25 cards in this short print set. Let's find a theme for it so that this way they're kind of obvious when you're going through the card. Sure. Maybe that theme yep. is celebrations or, you know, like pictures of teammates or just or really cool, like, sort of candid shots that you normally wouldn't see on a card. So you try to try to stick with the theme so that, you know, if once you see them all together, it's kind of obvious. In Stadium Club last year, in the short prints, initially there were only supposed to be 10. And um, so I picked, so the, I went for the 10. It was the Chicago Cubs, like, in the parade. So, like, that was my 10 card in the short print. And then we kind of were like, okay, we, we actually are going to add some more. So then I had to pick, like, a secondary theme that went with it. But um, yeah, so that's yeah. kind of how that works. Absolutely, and I know um, for C- for 2018 top series one, I know a, a lot of the short prints are the players. I believe in their um, warm warm up jerseys. I've noticed that a lot of them are you know batting cage pre game warm up jersey kind of things, and in the heritage, it is high number stuff as well as you guys have done something really, really cool with the Heritage. Uh, it's the This year is the 1969 look for Heritage. You guys have done something really cool this year. You've done action variations. Can you talk about those? Because those are really neat. Yeah, so the action and mini variations, they've uh, they've been around for a couple of years now in the Heritage set. What it is is because, you know, during these years, the original years, like 67, 68, 69, they were all posed imagery. So, like, you know, a guy with a bat on his shoulder, you know, doing whatever, but it was all posed portrait kind of shots. So to add a couple, like, add a little like sort of spice to Heritage, Tops included some short prints of action image variations. So whatever the number of cards were in the set, say it was a Bryce Harper, you know, Bryce Harper's base card is him standing there with his bat over his shoulder, but then the short printed action image variation is him sliding or him at bat or something, something in-game action that you wouldn't normally see within the set. Sure. Um, and then also this gave um, Tops an opportunity also to give collectors a chance to collect um, single cards of rookies because in those sets the rookies they're all like dual and triple. So from your you know from a random team say last year you had Tyler Austin and Aaron Judge on the same card because it was a dual rookie card. That's how they were in 68, where then included into the action image variation, it just happened to be worded that way because it's how, like, cards are created, like, for the production team. You had a single Iron Judge card, which, you know, many people prefer to have collected or wanted in their collection. So the action image variations gave Tops a way to add, you know, like I said, a little spice to the sets with the action images and then single rookie cards, as well as this year, you know, Shohei Otani is also in that subset. Absolutely, yeah. And his, his uh, I was looking on eBay at some of the uh, on-card autos that pulled, and I think the highest one that I saw yesterday that somebody was asking was like 5200 bucks for uh, for a red. So when, when you guys – when you guys put cards out or you guys get autographs for cards, do you have a preference between – like, is it easier for the for Tops as a company if the players do the stickers or if they do the on-card autos themselves? And then how do you certify that? Um, for every autograph signing, Tops has a representative there to essentially to help with the signing, like, hey, sign this card, sign here – and then also to 
say, like, yeah, this is legit. I saw it. I've done signings myself. So Tops, you know, Tops has rep- representatives throughout the country. But then also, like, in, there's some of the New York area, some of the Tops employees will go to these signings. So I've done a number of them myself. And, you know, you're there. You're helping out. Um you know, we prefer on-card autographs. We try to do on-card autographs as often as possible. Um, sometimes, for some production reasons, we need to go use stickers instead. But I think, for the most part, most people prefer the, uh, the on-card autographs for a number of different reasons. Collectability-wise, you know, they look nicer. Players like them because they have more space to use, like when they're signing the autographs themselves. So, for the most part, you know, Tops will aim for on-card autographs as much as possible. Now, when you guys come out with sets, you know, obviously you come out with Series 1, Series 2, you have High Number, you have um, Update, you have all these different sets for baseball that come out every year. When you guys try to try to come up with individual um, cards like foils and parallels and serial numbered cards and things like that, how do you pick players, and how do, how do you decide which cards get selected for that process? Um, well, just like any, like it starts with the associate brand manager. He's the one who's making the um, the checklist, and you want to pick, you know, who are some of the most popular players, who are the most collectible. You know, Mike Trout will be a card like that because he's probably one of the most collectible players. You know, anybody, even <laughs> right. if you're not an Angels fan loves to pull a Mike Trout card. So, you know, if when you're going through a list in your head of, like, you know, who are the most popular baseball players today, those are probably going to be the players, roughly, that you're going to see in a set like that. Sure, sure. And then when you guys – how do you guys do serial number cards? So you guys obviously do them based on what year it is. So this year's cards are going to be in Series 1. They're numbered up to 2018. Do you guys pick one player per team? Do you guys pick multiple players per team? Do you do 2018 cards of every player? How do you how do you deal with that process? For the parallels, the ones that are sequentially numbered, and even the, the unnumbered ones, um, they're usually for every player. So every card in, like in 2018 Series 1, every card in the base set has has the same number of parallels, like the gold, the purple, which for Toys R Us, um, you know, the Father's Day parallels, the Mother's Day parallels, you know, Camel parallels. I know there's so much, there's a bunch of them. But each card in the base set has all of those parallels. So we wouldn't necessarily be picking and choosing what, like which players would get the parallel or not. Every, they're all treated the same in that respect. Sure. So what are some – when you guys do decide to do – like you guys have some – some dual autos or some rookie stars or things like that. Do you guys do you guys decide that do you guys like take the photos of the players at spring training? Like when are the photos taken and how do you guys do the update sets? The photos um for the most part are gathered through Getty Images. Tops is a contract with Getty, so that's where we get any updated photography from the posed imagery that you see mostly through our heritage. That is Tops' own photography, and that is taken during spring training on photo day. Okay. Okay, so they do that on on photo day. So you mentioned earlier that you are a big um, Derek Jeter fan as well as a collector. What's your best Derek Jeter card? What's your favorite Derek Jeter card? And what's your most expensive Derek Jeter card? Um, so my favorite Derek Jeter card is a card from I want to say Fleer. Sometimes I forget, but it was from Fleer. It's called uh, it's like in this day, like you know, it's like a moment, like a calendar moment, and it's an autograph card of Derek Jeter, and it's like in this day, and it happens to be my birthday. So because oh, okay. it's, you know, my birthday is on the card and it's an Derek Jeter autograph that happens to be my favorite card in my set. Um, you know, I have all of his rookie cards, his, you know, I have his upper deck SP, which, you know, is obviously one of the most sought after Derek Jeter cards. Um, I love the, um, the stadium club P. Murphy, though. That's probably, like, one of my favorite rookie cards of his. And as far as the most expensive card, I don't know, I have a number of – I would have like several autograph cards of his, and they'll they'll probably sell for if I would ever sell them, but probably never would. They all just go in the same range, 
so to speak. Sure. So do you collect just cards, or do you collect, like, anything Derek Jeter? You know, I like the uh, Oyo toys. I collect, you know, if when I see some of those, like, of the Jeter's ones I do not have, you know, I'll pick those up to add to my collection. You know, just some, like, kind of, like, random kitschy stuff. Like, I remember, you know, back in the 90s, I was working at the Sports Authority, and Nike made, like, Derek Jeter wristbands. <laughs> like, I did not need, I did not need wristbands, <laughs> but I bought them anyway, and I still have them somewhere in a box. You know, I have some old newspapers right. from back then, like, from, not from 96, I happened to collect, like, I was just, I thought it was such a, like, um, an amazing year, even before the World Series, and I was just collecting, like, newspapers from that year, just, you know, like, cool covers from, like, the local papers, and I just happened to, col- you know, from that season, so I have all these amazing covers from, like, you know, the Daily News and the New York Post from, like, that season, because it was just really cool. So sometimes I'll pick up, like, different Derek Jeter things here and there, if, it's, if it catches my eye. I have a bunch of Derek Jeter bobbleheads as well from stadium giveaways in the minors and also at Yankee Stadium. Have you ever met the captain? I have several times from during my days when I was a sports writer. Um, you know, a couple of different times I got to interview him for stories I was working on. What was that like? Were you trying not to fangirl out? No, I'm, you know, I'm very <laughs> professional. I go and I do my job and, you know, ask the questions I need to ask. I mean, the first time I met him, I was probably trying to think, probably 20 years old. I was an intern at the local TV station, and um, okay. he had just come back from injury, and they were like, hey, you've been doing a great job here as, uh, you know, as a congratulations, go ask Derek Jeter question on camera. I'm like, oh, okay, I will. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he was super nice, and uh, he was great, and Another time I got to interview him, I remember I sneezed and he, he blessed me and that was great. And, um, you know, he's always been super nice and cordial and professional. Oh, excellent. So when you, when you, when you guys put out a new product, one of my favorite products that you guys have started getting back into the last few years that I'm really happy about is the stadium club. Can you kind of talk about how the, how the how the revival of Stadium Club kind of happened because when I was a kid, I was you know back in the '90s, we had Stadium Club, we had Tops, we had Fleer, we had Donruss, we had you know five or six different companies every year. But the Stadium Club cards, I think I I think there's something about the photography that I love. Can you talk about the uh, photography and the Top Stadium Club cards? Yep. So Tom's brought the same club back before I started working there. So I don't know the exact decision that went into it, but it just probably seemed like the right time for it. You know, there was room in the sort of industry for this, like, you know, a medium size, mid size trading card set, like a mid price trading card set. Um, I did work on Stadium Club the last three years. And when it comes to picking photography, you know, you know, as you're going through, I was talking before, you're going through the images, you know, I would look for images that one, you wouldn't, necessarily see on a baseball card you know it wasn't just going to be a regular like oh cool look he swung the bat or he's sliding into the base or it just had to be something slightly different but also something that you know gave me an emotional connection to the photo so as I'm going through it and I would look at a picture and even if like let's say it's a guy standing on the on deck circle there was just something about like either the angle or the way he was looking at the field or the way he was looking. So, and, you know, I would have an emotional reaction to the picture. I would say, yep, this is going on the stadium club card. And, you know, it's a re- it was a really while a long process because you're going through, like, you know, you're scrutinizing, like, every image that you're picking. It was really a lot of fun and very rewarding. When you When you meet people and you tell them, what you do for a living, what's the what's the most common reaction that people give you? Oh, that, that, that's cool. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, I work for Tom. And they're like, oh, that's cool. And they say, what do you do? And I tell them, oh, I get to play with baseball cards all day. I don't, but it sounds good. But, you know, I get to play with them a lot. Um, you know, right. people get really excited. If you were somebody who collected, like, when you're younger, even now, you know, suddenly, like, everybody's like, oh, I have, you know, I had this really cool card, and they tell me a little bit about their collection, and they go into it. 
Or, you know, they're like, oh, wow, like, tell me, tell me you know, how it's different now. Like, what is Tom's doing now with cards? And then you sit there and you get to talk about, like, all the new ways, you know, because when you collected as a kid, there wasn't necessarily, like, the autographs or the game you memorabilia, like, the jersey cards. So it gives, you know, an opportunity to explain how cards are different now. One of my, uh, one of my, you talk about how cards are different. One of my favorite things about the Heritage cards and also, I believe it's the Allen and Ginter, is that you guys have non-baseball um, cards in a baseball set. Um, in the Allen and Ginter, for example, I think it was last year, you had a card in the Allen and Ginter set. Tell me what that was like. Yeah, so every year for the last, I don't know, like 10 years or so, Tops has randomly, essentially pick names out of a hat, has randomly chosen 10 employees to have... 10 autograph cards in Allen and Ginter. And I was lucky enough to get my name chosen last year to be in the set. And, you know, there was 10 autographs that were placed into Allen and Ginter for last year. And it was, it was really exciting. I mean, as a baseball card collector, the fact that like you can own your own card is probably not something, you know, most collectors ever get to do and it right. was just it was such a it was such a cool feeling to see like you know people I remember it was actually somebody had pulled my card and they wrote about it on the blowout forum and you know there were you know there was mixed reactions because some people were like oh that's kind of cool other people were like I don't know who that is why would I want that card but the guy who pulled the card was like this is actually pretty awesome and I'm giving it to my daughter because you know, she opened the cards with me. She was like, oh, who is this woman on the card? And, you know, he got to explain, you know, this, she works for Tops and this and that. And his daughter thought it was the coolest thing in the whole world, which for me is even is even actually cooler than having my own card. Do you have one of your card? Do you have one of the 10 signed cards? I do. I also have, uh, they have a samples as well, unframed, because the ones in the product are framed. And then unframed, I have... Uh, you know, I have some samples as well. Okay. Do do they do uh now now you guys do variations. We got about three minutes left. Talk to me about the process of printing plates. Um, oh my god, I don't really know the process well <laughs> when it comes to printing okay. plates. I mean obviously they're used in the process to print certain um certain products because you can print some products digitally, but not all. Most of them are not printed digitally. They're printed using, you know, they're printed using, you know, the printing plates and printing presses, I guess. But I'm not, you know, I, I do not work on the production side as far as that goes, so I don't really, I haven't really seen the process. Okay. Now, what's, what about, like, Chrome? So where did the idea come to do Chrome versus, I guess, the kind of standard ones? Because Chrome, obviously, you know, is at, for an autograph collector, they, you have to prep them, whereas with the standard card, you don't. I'm not sure what your question is. Sorry. So where did the pro, where did you guys decide to do Chrome at? Well, I, um, that was long. I mean, they've been doing Chrome for decades now. That was long, long, long before I was at the Tops company. Um, you know, yeah. they do Chrome. You know, that Chrome is, has its own standalone set, and there's a couple of Chrome cards in Heritage. You know, when it comes to Chrome, people, a lot of people like Chrome because, you know, it has that sort of high-end feel to the card, you know, as, well, as opposed yeah. to being tapered. It has, this, like, this nice metallic finish on them. So Tops, you know, added actually Stadium Chrome to Stadium Club last year to also, you know, add a little bit of value to people opening their cards and it gives people another, you know, sort of chase element if you're, like, going after certain players or teams. We got one minute left. We got we got one minute left. Give me, uh, give me, a, sentence, give me a sentence about um, eBay, good or bad for the hobby. Um, you know, it comes with everything. It comes with its good and it comes with its bad. But, you know, people are able to get cards that they may never have seen otherwise because now, you know, somebody from Arkansas opens a pack of cards and pulls a Derek Jeter 101, I wouldn't know about it unless it popped up on eBay. 
So it comes, you right. know, it comes with its good and bad, and I think you just have to embrace both sides of it. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Susie. How do you, spell it? How do you pronounce your last name? I butchered it. Lejudai? Lejudai. She works yes. for Top. She's the marketing communications manager. I cannot thank you enough. It has been a really, really fun half an hour, and as a, as a card collector, it's really, really cool for me to talk to somebody from Top. So thank you so very much for giving me a half an hour of your time. Oh, great. Thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. No problem. We'll talk to you later. Thank you. All right. Bye. Yeah, bye. So that was Susan LaJudy. She had, she works for Top. She is their communications manager. So that was uh that was episode one of the Collector's Corner. I'm gonna try to do more of these episodes based on just kind of the hobby and what people collect and autographs and all that kind of thing. So it'll be it'll be something that we're gonna do regularly. But uh, man, what a what a bunch of cool information that she was able to give us. I hope you guys go back and listen to that because that's just that's a really really cool kind of inside look at how Tops makes cards, comes up with images, and all that kind of stuff. We got a couple more episodes happening today, so stick around. Thanks, guys.